Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're checking out a really odd computer from Acer today. This is called their Switch 12, and I thought this was going to be like their Switch 10, which I liked, which was a low-cost computer uh, that had some neat stuff with the screen where you could pull it off and flip it around. Uh, this one, unfortunately, is not as cool as that one. It's a hybrid tablet laptop, uh, and it doesn't really accomplish either of those functions very well. It is rather big and bulky, as you can see. They tried to make it almost kind of like a Surface, a Microsoft Surface uh, design to some extent. It's got the same kind of kickstand uh, kind of approach to things, but it really isn't all that useful as a tablet just because it's so big. It is only 2.4 pounds, but it feels a lot heavier given its bulk, and I think that uh, is a strike against it. It does have a nice display, though. It's got a 1920 by 1080 display, uh, really good viewing angles on it. It is a touch screen, too, uh, really responsive, as you'd expect one of these touch screens to be. Uh, my only complaint with it, though, it is a, it is a bit dim. Uh, so it doesn't really get as bright as I would like it to. Now, this computer, because uh, it is a computer, is running with a Core M processor. It's one of the new fanless chips from Intel. This is an 800 megahertz part, about the same as you would see in other uh, Core M chips, uh, chipset-based computers that you'll find at this price point. So this is about $700, $699. Uh, it has uh, four gigs of RAM, though, which is less than some of the other computers that cost the same. So a uh, great comparative is the uh, Asus UX305 that has the same chip, uh, but it has eight gigs of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD for $699. Uh, this one has the same chip, but half the RAM, four gigs, and only 128 gigabytes of onboard storage for that same $699 price tag. So I think it's a little bit overpriced for what it is. Now, you'll see here that we've got it in kind of its uh, hybrid mode here. We have it propped up on uh, the desk here, and there's no keyboard, but the keyboard actually lives in the back of the computer. Now, you can't, unfortunately, flip the screen around. That would be ideal because you would uh, get a pretty uh, easy way to flip back and forth. What you have to do, though, is detach the keyboard uh, and then flip it around, and then you can use the keyboard wirelessly. So it is a wireless keyboard, uh, or you can dock it. Uh, with the computer here. And watch what happens. The magnets will kind of line up and it'll almost dock itself. It just snaps into place on its own. Uh, the keyboard is rigid enough that you can use it as a laptop so it doesn't get all floppy on you. Uh, you can use it on your lap without any issues. It really is a well, sort of comfortable typing experience, I guess, on the lap. Uh, mainly, you know, my, my main gripes with uh, saying it's sort of comfortable is the fact that the screen kind of lives in the middle of the device. So it's a little bit weird to have that screen uh, so close to the keyboard. There really hasn't been uh, many laptops designed like this where the keyboard and the monitor are very, or the screen are very close together like this. Now, you can, of course, detach the keyboard and use it wirelessly if you want to get a little bit more distance, maybe get a little bit more of a resting spot for your uh, wrist, but that's not going to be very practical on an airplane or something where your uh, seating uh, is very limited. Now, the other issue with the keyboard is that this is a wireless keyboard. Even when it is docked, it is uh, in wireless mode and consumes an onboard battery. So there's a battery on the keyboard in addition to the computer. It doesn't charge when you have it docked, which I thought was a very, dis very disturbing decision here. I think they should at least give you the, the keyboard some kind of power when it's plugged in uh, because otherwise you're going to be draining the keyboard battery even when you're using it uh, like most of us would docked to the front of the computer. The only way to charge the keyboard is when it's uselessly docked to the back of the computer. So you can certainly type on the keyboard while it's behind the screen, but you can't see what's on the screen while it's charging, which is unfortunate. It will charge the keyboard, though, when the computer is off, and it will charge off of the laptop's battery, although that's not a huge power drain. Uh, these keyboards are very low power consuming, but uh, you have to remember to keep plugging the keyboard into the other side of the computer in order to get it charged, and I thought that was a very odd decision on their part. The keys themselves are tiny and spaced too far apart, so I really had a hard time typing very comfortably on it. You'll notice also there's a lack of a trackpad. What they have done uh, is put in one of these little pointer nubs here, very similar to what you see on the ThinkPads uh, and a lot of other computers from the 90s and early 2000s that had these. So not too bad, but uh, not maybe as uh, useful as a trackpad might be, especially for scrolling and that sort of thing. Of course, you do have a, a touch screen built into this device, uh, so you can do things like... Um, uh, you know, just tap on the screen and scroll with your finger or something like that. But one thing that I noticed is that the screen is really bouncing quite a bit on here while you're using it, which isn't too great. So even when you're typing on there and your desk uh, is moving a little bit, the screen will translate all of that motion uh, while you're going here. So if you're on a train or a bus or something or a plane, you might uh, get a little motion sickness trying to use it that way. Uh, there are some ports of note on here, though. You've got a video out with an HDMI micro adapter there. You have a USB 3 micro adapter here, and this is for connecting connecting USB 3 devices. So it doesn't have a regular, at least a regular USB 3 connector. So you're going to have to get some kind of adapter to get 
uh, your hard drives and other USB 3 devices to plug into this thing because it just doesn't have a standard uh, USB connector that you'll see on most PCs. So that's a problem for me. Uh, there is a power adapter here, so you can plug in there. Now there is a regular USB port on here, but this is only a USB 2.0 port on this side, so it's a little bit slower than that uh, other port on the other side of the computer. On this side, you have a volume rocker up and down. Uh, the Windows button is here, and then you have a headphone microphone jack. At the top, you have a power and standby button, as well as a micro SD card slot for uh, putting on some external storage, which might, might be helpful because you only have 128 gigs of storage on the main device. Uh, some of that used up by the, part, you know, the recovery partition and other things. You have probably about 100 gigabytes, give or take, of actual usable space on the drive. So having that memory card slot might be good for storing media and that sort of thing. It is a micro SD card slot and it will sit flush to the monitor so it will work uh, well as augmented storage. Now all the hardware decisions aside, this actually does perform quite well. The Core M processor has been something I've been really impressed with lately uh, because it does really perform nicely and doesn't consume a lot of power and allows us to make these fanless devices, at least allows the manufacturers to make these fanless devices. So this one is fanless uh, per but performs pretty well. We're going to take a look at that now. All right, so let's take a look at its web browsing prowess first. We've got Google Chrome loaded up here. I'll just pop open to a story here and you can see it uh, renders the page relatively quickly and we can scroll through everything. We can even uh, get the ads popping up very quickly as well. Uh, the mouse is a bit of a hassle to deal with because I'm, I'm just not used to using these little nub mice. Uh, so it is a little difficult to get the mouse in the right spot. But as you can see, the page renders very quickly. Things scroll very nicely uh, and it works quite well. Uh, when you look at the benchmarks for Chrome, I use a test called Octane, which measures uh, Chrome's ability to uh, render JavaScript and other basic HTML functions on the device. And as you can see here, the Switch 12 scores 18,700, which puts it about around the same speed as the UX305 from Asus running with the same processor. And as a point of comparison, you can see how it compares to my old MacBook Air from 20. 2012, uh, which comes in at 16,680. So as a uh, web browsing device, it does very well. And I think you'll have a very good experience with it. I will go over to a YouTube page real quick and just see some uh, videos on there. I should note that the speakers are in the front here. They don't sound very good. They're a bit tinny. They can be loud enough to uh, project what you want to project out of it, but it doesn't really sound all that great. Uh, but though you can certainly play back video relatively quickly. And if you have a decent internet connection, uh, you should have a good go at that. I think it has wireless AC on board and it definitely supports the five gigahertz Wi-Fi. Yeah, it does have AC uh, and supports five gigahertz channels. So you're gonna get uh, some of the newer uh, Wi-Fi access points working with this without issue. So the next thing we're gonna do real quick is pop open Microsoft Word. I've got this newsletter template that I like to run uh, when I'm testing a computer out because it does have a lot of things like images and other things on here uh, that tend to tax the processor a little bit more uh, than uh, other, other things in Word might. But as you can see, as I scroll through here, it seems to render everything very quickly. I can move the images around if I wish. I'm probably gonna screw up the document in the process. There I go. Um, but you can see though, it does. Uh, it is able to uh, make adjustments on the fly here very quickly. So if you're doing things like word processing and spreadsheets and whatever, uh, you're not gonna have any slowdown with this at all. And this is not a gaming device by any stretch of the imagination, but it can run games. And one great game to test on hardware like this is Minecraft. And I'm surprised by how well Minecraft is performing on here because I'm getting better frame rates by and large uh, than I am out of the Asus UX305 running with the same processor. So I don't know if it's just maybe the map that I'm on or something, but as you can see, I'm getting anywhere from like 80 to 75 frames per second. I'm running about 84 right now, which is really, really good for uh, a Core M processor. So this is a pretty impressive uh, display here, at least for this particular game. And one last thing to talk about, and that is battery life. You'll probably get about five or six hours, give or take, when you're doing uh, basic work tasks like productivity, you know, word processing, web browsing, email, that sort of thing. That's about what I experienced with it myself. That was with the screen brightness up. So I think you might be able to squeeze a little bit more uh, if you turn the brightness down on it, but uh, not great battery life either uh, compared to some other computers that might be out there at this price point. So I have to say, you know, it's just, it's a shame because it performs well, but the hardware design is so bizarre that it really doesn't do either of the two things it tries to be, which is a tablet and a laptop. But what I would do uh, is look at other Core M machines at this price point, because they're gonna perform about the same, uh, but you'll get a computer that's better designed, uh, mostly as a laptop. And then if you really want a tablet, uh, there are some great like eight inch Windows tablets running the full version of Windows 8.1 that cost about a hundred bucks. So you can get a laptop for $700, the tablet for about a hundred bucks, and you'll have uh, the best of both worlds with two devices designed to be what they are uh, for under 
a thousand dollars and you'll be happy to uh, go ahead and in that direction because getting this one just doesn't really just doesn't do it for me it just doesn't really perform uh, the two tasks it sets out to do very well this is Lon Seidman thanks for watching